stripping me of both family and friends. You lead me to this hole in the earth where you will wall me up and never allow me to see the light again. Take her away, she's said enough. <sighs> Bury her alive as I have instructed and let her decide whether she wishes to die quickly or waste away slowly in the darkness. I wash my hands of her life and death. You must bury the son of Oedipus and atone for your errors. Well, it's a good play for nurses. Um, the images at the beginning of her brother lying, you know, in that awful state and what was going to happen to him is sort of symbolic of the patient. You're trying to get to that patient. They are not dead in most cases. And uh, you want to get there and you want to help them. And something is stopping you. Um, in this case, Creon or the administration is stopping you. And, and then what happens? Do they allow you to get there and to do the job that you were trained to do? No, he buries her alive. And I thought that was very symbolic of how I know I have felt and other nurses have described it. There are shifts where you honestly feel you're being buried because there's too much to do and you can't get to it. And they haven't supplied enough staff to allow you to get to it. I'm sure during the worst of the COVID times that nurses did feel I'm drowning or I'm being buried alive here. It's time for you to show what you're made of, Ismini. Will you honor your family name or reject it? You lost me there. Will you help me? Help you what? Move the body. Do you mean bury it? When it has been forbidden by law? Of course I mean bury it. He was my brother and yours. Where is your loyalty? Creon is our king now. I am loyal to him. Creon may not keep me from my family. The other thing was the relationship between Antigone and Ismene and that conflict. So for me personally, I started working early on in the pandemic and decided to step out of the workforce. And for me, both of the, that relationship between them represented the struggle of feeling like you're betraying your profession by making that decision because you have to make that decision for, what, for whatever reasons nurses do have to make those decisions for their family or whatever the case may be. But that was something that stuck out to me as well. There was one line that stood out to me and it was silence can be just as ominous as wailing. Mm -hmm. um, I found that this pandemic basically stripped away the illusion that all people are treated equally. We may be created equally, but we're not treated equally. Um, a lot of inequities and disparities are like built into our, our society and in healthcare. And this pandemic just highlighted all of that. So you have a lot of conversations that go unspoken. And I think it's that silence that's, that makes, that's ominous as wailing. I'm so honored to be a part of the profession, to be in this profession of nourishing and this new idea, or maybe new to me idea within nursing called the social determinants of health looking at the, the factors outside of the hospital, outside of just sicknesses, but looking at our environment as a, as a means to, um, as a factor in our health, our activities, our, our religious practices, our friends and our relationships, all of that is so important. And the question that gives me anxiety as a brand new, year, new nurse, I just passed my NCLEX this past weekend, is what's the border that I'm gonna draw around that? Because I can help my patient while they're in the hospital. And that's great, but, but what about outside of that? What, what, what happens outside of the four corners of that hospital? How do I help? And, and do I have the energy to do that, to go outside and continue that care? Because healthcare can't just be taking care of people when they're at the hospital, it has to be before. Citizens, rulers of this country, witness my unjust suffering at the hands of these men for showing reverence for what is right and what is sacred.